It seems that every closely related group of plants or trees has one species that likes to bend the rules to define that group. The white oaks are no exception, and possibly the oddest species of white oak goes against one of the characteristics shared by most species in the white oak group. More about that in a minute, but for now, let's learn a bit about this oddball white oak known as the overcup oak, Quercus lyrata, an oak found mainly in the Mississippi Valley states and the southern Atlantic coast, where it is found growing in the bottoms and floodplains of large river systems in clay to silty clay soils and is tolerant of prolonged flooding. It is a small to mid-sized oak and will attain a height of 35 to 60 feet with an equal crown spread. Overcup oak grows with a single, usually short trunk compared to the overall size of the tree. The crown can vary from being narrow and rounded with slender drooping branches towards the bottom of the tree for trees growing in a forested setting to a much more open crown with the lower branches being perpendicular to the trunk and parallel with the ground, somewhat like a live oak for trees that are growing in a more open setting. The leaves of overcup oak are around six to eight inches long and two to four inches wide. The shape of the leaves can be variable, but they are usually the widest near the tip with a noticeable waist near the midpoint, then widening slightly before tapering to the petiole. There are normally five to 10 rounded lobes with more at the tip and usually a pair or two near the petiole. The upper leaf surface is a shiny deep green, the lower surface pale green to whitish, and may or may not have hairs depending on the age of the tree. Fall color is quite variable in shades of brown and yellow. The bark is gray to dark gray, scaly, divided by fine fissures into narrow, non-symmetrical ridges that may appear to be twisting around the trunk. I haven't mentioned anything about oak flowers because oaks don't have showy flowers and they all basically follow the same script when it comes to blooming. Oaks are monoecious and produce both male and female flowers. The male flowers are catkins, which can be seen drooping from the tree in the spring, about the time the leaf buds start to open, and the easy to overlook, small, female flowers form in the leaf axils. Oak flowers are wind pollinated and produce a prolific amount of pollen. Although there is no nectar produced, pollinators such as native bees and honeybees will collect the ample pollen. If you love learning about our native white oaks, Pretend that like button is a group of oak catkins, be like the wind, and pollinate that like button. Overcup oak acorns are quite distinctive. They are from one half to one inch long, squat, and rounded, with two thirds to the entire nut being covered by a grayish to tan cap with hairy scales. This makes the acorns buoyant, allowing them to disperse with flood water. Acorns ripen and drop in September and October, and although they are eaten by ducks and mammals to some extent, they are lower in preference than the acorns of most other white oak species due to their larger size, especially when it comes to waterfowl, and the higher tannin levels in the case of mammals. Overcup oaks are unusual when it comes to white oaks as their acorns do not germinate in the fall, but overwinter and germinate in the spring. This is an adaptation to their often flooded during the winter native habitat. The key feature for identifying overcup oak is the acorn with a cap that covers all or almost all of the nut, which can usually be found under the tree most of the year due to their lower palatability to wildlife and delayed germination. Leaf shape and the floodplain habitat overcup oak grows in are also useful for identification. Other oaks that may be confused with overcup oak are the swamp white oak, Quercus bicolor, which is also found in bottomlands, but has leaves that have much less distinct tooth-like lobes. The white oak, Quercus alba, which is normally found in somewhat drier areas than the overcup oak and has deeper and more uniformly lobed leaves with no obvious waste. Texas red oak, Quercus texana, which has distinct bristle tips at the ends of the lobes. And post oak, Quercus stellata, which is found in dry upland locations and has a distinctive boxy lobed cross-shaped leaf. Doug Talame brought the importance of our native oaks to insects, birds, and other wildlife to the public in his excellent book, The Nature of Oaks, which should be on every backyard ecologist reading list. You can find a link to this must read book on the backyard ecology recommendations page, which I will link in the description. Although the overcup oak naturally occurs in floodplains and wetlands, it is adaptable to drier soils and has been used as a specimen tree, so it may be encountered in landscape settings. 
This is a tree with a long lifespan on favorable sites and trees of 300 to 400 years old have been documented. Overcup oak is logged, but its wood is considered inferior to that of most white oak species. The scientific name Lyrata was given to this oak because the leaves resemble the shape of a lyre, except a lyre is shaped like the letter U, so I'm not sure what happened there. The leaves might be shaped like a lute or maybe a violin, but to me, a lyre is a stretch. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Although the overcup oak is quite distinctive and has some unusual characteristics, it is not nearly as well known as some of its relatives in the white oak group such as the king of oaks, the white oak Quercus alba, which you can learn all about in this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.